Something pulled at my blanket in the middle of the night. So this happened over a year ago. I live with my family, which includes my two younger sisters. That night, a friend of theirs was sleeping over, and I didn't want them to bother me, so I remember closing my door for the night and locking it. I normally leave it slightly open. I also got my doorknob changed months prior to this, because my sisters tend to go into my room and take my stuff, so I had the only key to my room that I kept with me at all times. I woke up in the middle of the night because I felt my blanket being pulled. I didn't think anything of it at first. I thought maybe I did it or something. I don't know why I overlooked it. It was being pulled from the right corner. I pulled my blanket back up and went back to sleep. I don't know how much time passed, but I woke again because I felt my blanket once again being pulled. It stopped when I would wake up. I slightly sat up but stopped because I realized I did not want to see what was pulling my blanket. Now, I wasn't scared though, even though normally I would be. For example, like the heart dropping feeling. I was somewhat awake at that point and realized something was wrong, but I was calm. I wasn't even tired. I just knew I had to sleep. It's weird when I look back at it. My room was my room, but it was different. It had a strange, strange glow to it. Anyways, I just went back to sleep without my blanket. I turned to face the wall and went to sleep. I decided it was best to ignore whatever it was. I awoke once more later that night because the hallway light was hitting my eyes. I squint and look up to see my door wide open and the hallway lights on, which is always on at night, and a tall dark figure standing there laughing. I didn't hear it. I didn't even hear anything, actually. It was moving its head back and forth, like when a person laughs. I, I just remember kind of being like, yeah, I don't have time for this shit, and closed my eyes and went back to sleep. The next morning, I woke up and left my room, which included me unlocking my door to get out. I asked my sisters and their friend and almost interrogated them. They swore it wasn't them. We aren't that religious anymore, but we take stuff like this seriously and know to own up to if, if, if it was a prank. My sisters loved me very much and saw how scared I was and still said they didn't do it. I know, I was not dreaming. I definitely know it. I was awoke from a dream I was having. I remember feeling annoyed by the cold air hitting my legs. Fun fact, my room used to be my sister's old room, where she went through the edgy I love Satan phase and played the Ouija board and did weird shit like that. We once found a paper under her bed saying, Satan, take me. I gave you my soul to take. This caused scary shit to happen in the house in the span of a year. Creepy house with a history, blanket tugging, etc. Due to the amount of experiences I've had in my life, this is my first, but I doubt that this will be my last post in this section. We lived in a house that creeped me massively when I was 11 until 18 years old. Things came to a head one night. I was 17, when my friend called in after his bar shift around 1 a.m. We played Uno for a while, as he was doing tricks with his new Zippo. A little later, he couldn't find his Zippo, and I said, I had a lighter in my room upstairs. We both went up, and I went to open the door to go into my room. It did not matter how hard I pushed down on the handle, it just would not budge. My friend laughed and told me to stop messing around. He opened the door and walked in. I saw his face turn white as he was looking to his right. As I went to walk in to see what was the matter, I felt the sensation of 100 hands pushing me back out of my room. He grabbed something out of the room and went back downstairs. I quickly followed. I asked what was wrong. He told me that he saw his Zippo on top of my bed and picked it up like it was ice. I told him what I had felt as I tried to enter my room and that was enough for him. He said he was tired and went home. I sat in the living room for a while trying to make sense of things but couldn't. At around 3 a.m. I was shattered and decided I had to go to bed. There was no issue going into my room, though it was freezing. My single bed was lengthways against the internal wall. I settled into the bed the way I normally did, in the fetal position facing the wall, quilt tucked in under my chin, both hands holding. I lay this way as I'd always had the sensation of someone sitting on my legs if I lay on my back. Also, I could not see anything. Due to so many experiences in the house, I was used to trying to get to sleep feeling very uneasy, but always had. Not this night though. 
As I was feeling myself drift off, I felt a sharp tug on the quilt. I screamed, fuck! And my mind frozen to the spot that just happened. Just as I felt that denial may work, yank. Oh, shit, no. This is really happening. I'm absolutely petrified, too scared to move. Please just fuck off, I'm thinking to myself. After what felt like an eternity, but it was probably only 10 seconds, I had the quilt firmly grasped under my chin. I felt yet another massive, sharp tug on the quilt. My fight or flight sticks in, and I, I throw my arms in the direction of the tug while throwing the quilt off, hoping to connect with whatever it was. I was out of bed in a flash, with the lights on in a microsecond. I stood there scanning the room with my quilt laying in the middle of the floor. For some reason, I decided to jump on the quilt half a dozen times, nothing. I ran downstairs and switched on the TV. Every light I could switch on was on. I had the most terrifying sleepless night that night. A couple years after moving out of that house, I confided in my cousin as to most of my experiences in the house. He was older than me, and I lived in the same street all his life. He told me something that he didn't want to while we were still living there. The previous owner's daughter used to do Ouija board sessions in the house and even practice black magic. Her old room was my room. I'm not far off 40 now and I still think of that house and many experiences regularly. I will post more if people are interested. It looked like my brother. When I was nine years old, I woke up in the middle of the night, curled up in a ball under all my covers. I felt this was an odd position, so I tried readjusting myself. But something in the room felt a bit off. I had this odd feeling of dread, as if there was something in the room next to me. I usually sleep next to my older brother on the bed besides me, but on this particular night, he was on a school trip. I told myself that, Maybe I was just afraid of sleeping in the room by myself, and that it was no big deal, so I started to remove the covers from my face. My eyes took a second to adjust to the darkness, but I saw someone sitting on the bed next to me. It was my brother. He sat there just staring at me. He seemed normal except for one thing, his face. It was similar, but it had a very unnatural look. His eyes were wide open, and he wore such a creepy smile. I quickly hid under my covers. My heart started to race, and I clenched my fists and dug my nails into my hands to check if I was asleep, if I was dreaming at all. This was no dream. I stayed in a fetal position under my bed covers for a while, rationalizing what I'd just seen. I mustered some courage to take a second look. I... Uh, I lifted the covers and I saw he was still there, but this time standing next to my bed. His facial expression was even more menacing than before. I hid under my covers for the second time. I could hear my heartbeat as if it was about to burst out of my chest. What was it? What did it want? Why did it look like my brother? I peeked out of my covers for the third time, hoping it was just in my head or maybe the thing, the thing had gone away. As I lifted my blankets, I saw it sitting on my bed. It was smiling. His eyes were now staring into mine. His face inched closer to me. His smile grew into a full grin. He had too many teeth. I panicked and buried my face into my covers. I, I said the fastest prayer I could at the moment, and then I lifted my face, and it was gone. As soon as I saw it, it disappeared. I ran into my parents' bed and slept with them for the rest of the night. I, I had no clue what it was. And I don't pretend to have an ex explanation for it at all. All I know is that I saw something that night that had no rational explanation to be there. Has anyone else seen something like that before? My experiences on a rural ranch. I recently moved into my own place, 
after living with my now ex-boyfriend for two years. During my time there, I had some pretty strange experiences. A little background on the house. It was my ex's childhood home. He lived there for about 25 years. It used to be a quail ranch and sits on 80 plus acres. He had paranormal experiences in the home as a child, but has since rationalized his experiences and chooses to no longer believe anything paranormal. Shortly after moving in, I noticed a particularly bad feeling in the back bedroom. When my boyfriend would leave for work and I would be alone in the room, I, I would be awoken by a sense of dread that something was there. I would experience the paralysis frequently and be unable to wake myself up, which became so exhausting emotionally that I requested he wake me before leaving so I could get up and go sleep in the living room. Things would occur in the house, like doors opening by themselves, strange noises, things being moved, but where I felt most uncomfortable was outside. When I would go outside, especially after dark, I got a strong sense of being watched or followed, or that something was coming up behind me. I would often hear what sounded like a person trying to imitate poorly. Animal sounds like an owl. I, I would tell my boyfriend about the experiences, and it seemed to get only worse. One night, my boyfriend and I and our children decided to go camping on the hill of the property I worked that day. So despite feeling uncomfortable, I fell asleep pretty quickly the next morning. My boyfriend's 11-year-old son asked me when I moved back to my spot, because he saw me sleeping next to my 6-year-old son. I told him I had not moved because I was sleeping next to the baby, who was only three months old at the time, and I was worried for him getting cold. My boyfriend was next to me, and the only other person in the tent was the 11-year-old and a 6-year-old sleeping in the back corners. It was a very large tent that sleeps 10 people, so there was quite a bit of space between us and the kids, and he insisted he definitely saw an adult laying next to my son, and he just assumed it was me, and went back to sleep. We just shrugged the experience off, as him being half asleep and not knowing what he saw. We got up and went back to the house and got the kids ready for school. We had intended to go back and retrieve the tent and sleeping bags later in the day, but laziness took over, and we didn't retrieve it until two days later. When we entered the tent, we immediately hit with a horrendous smell. It was like a mix between rotting meat and the smell of some homeless people get from not bathing for a very long time. It made us nauseous, but we packed up the stuff anyways and left the sleeping bags outside to air out. The smell never went away, and we ended up discarding them, assuming an animal had gone in the tent or something like that. After that, the experiences seemed to increase. My boyfriend always slept with the room pitch black, not even a light from an alarm clock, or the little red charging light on the cell phone could be visible, and one night... I was awoken by the sound of heavy breathing about a foot away from my face. It was dark and I couldn't see. I was still groggy when I was about to tell my six-year-old son, who had a habit of getting out of bed in the middle of the night, to go back to his room when I remembered. My son was at his grandmother's house for the weekend, and the only ones there was myself and my boyfriend. After that hit me, the breathing still continued. I rolled over quickly and got as close to my boyfriend as possible and shook him to wake up as I shook him the breathing stopped. I told him there was someone in the room. He half asleep turned and used his cell phone light to scan the room, nothing. So he went back to sleep and was soon snoring. After that I stopped close to him with my back turned towards where the breathing was coming from and for a solid hour I could feel something poking me on the back through the blanket like it was trying to get my attention. I ignored it and clung tightly to my boyfriend and was too afraid to turn and look, imagining I would see some horrible grotesque looking figure if I did. Another incident, my friend was visiting one night and was dropped off at the end of the driveway, which was a long dirt road leading to the house. She came into the house panicked and said, something was walking behind her up the driveway, but she was too afraid to look behind and also had the feeling if she acknowledged it, it would only be worse. My son who would sleep in the room at the front of the house was terrified of sleeping alone, a problem I never had with him before. 
It was a battle every single night to get him to sleep. He said he was afraid, because there was a scary face at his window. He had broken the curtain rod, so his window was uncovered. I would tell him there was nothing there, but every morning, I would wake him up for school. He was out of his bed, and actually was sleeping on the couch. Many animals disappeared while I lived there. Ten cats, two chickens, and a large lab roddy mixed dog. We assumed coyotes got to them, but never heard any noises and never found any traces of them, except once. We found the remnants of one animal we assumed was one of the cats, laid out on top of the barbecue. It was just chunks of flesh and fur. Whatever had gotten, it didn't leave much behind. There weren't any bones. I've had other paranormal experiences, but something about this felt different. Almost like... The whole property itself was haunted, not just the house. I've had many more experiences in the house, and my ex's family members have told me that their experience is there too. All I know is that whatever is there is definitely not good. And since leaving that house, I have felt a great sense of relief. I no longer have an overwhelming that sense of dread. And my son sleeps just fine. In his room alone, with no more mention of scary monster faces. Bed shaking with concrete underneath. When I was in high school, my mother bought a two bedroom, one back house in Florida. One of those rooms was a converted garage. It had outdoor style carpet and underneath that you could very easily tell there was concrete as there were steps down into the room made out of concrete along with random spots of the carpet coming up around them and the walls. Well, I wanted this room because it was far away dark and cool for a teenage boy. About four months into living there, I noticed that as I was falling asleep, I would start to feel the bed shaking, not violent scary exorcist style, but enough to make me snap my eyes open. Each time I would open my eyes, the bed would slowly stop shaking, as if it were aware that I knew it was shaking. Before this, I was rather skeptical. Another ghost for you for another time. I did everything to accredit it to something else. Something rational. The washer and the dryer were in the laundry room attached to my bedroom. That, that had to be it. Except, there would never be any laundry going when I went to sleep. It was so loud that I would wait till it was done to go to bed. Okay, maybe there is a rodent or something living under my bed and I didn't know of it. I didn't see it. There was none under my bed. I had a box spring with a mattress on top of it. Maybe my, my, my head was beating so hard that it was causing the bed to shake. This actually has happened to me, but it would not be in sync with the bed shaking here. Concrete floor meant it wasn't someone just walking around, strolling through, or anything else like that of that sort, unless something was going on under the earth around that house. Something about this room always made me feel very uneasy about it. I, I, I don't know what it was. It had big mirrors covering one wall on either side of a window. Eventually, I covered those windows with blankets. And eventually, the shaking stopped. But it still freaks me out remembering it. I've always been scared of mirrors. But being a teenager and drinking a lot, I lined the mirror with a bunch of liquor bottles trying to be cool, you know? and not thinking about my fear of them. I mean, it doesn't matter though, because other than that room, the entire house, everything else, was just perfectly, perfectly fine. <laughs> 